This is Pastor Nathan Willard, Inc. United Church of Christ, where you might be getting kind of a slow, low-quality stream since I forgot to take this off of our Wi-Fi, but who knows? We'll see what happens. Um, I am coming to you today to talk about the end of 1 Peter. We're into 1 Peter 5 now, which is the conclusion. And for me, I'm looking at it as a little bit of the summing up of the role that people in authority have toward one another and how communities should function. It reiterates some other things um, about the distress that the community is under, but it also reminds us once more to focus on what we want our community to look like. So 1 Peter writes in uh, chapter 5, verse 1, Therefore I have a request for the elders among you. I ask this as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings, and as one who shares in the glory that is about to be revealed. I urge the elders, so he's speaking specifically of the elders, the people in authority in the community, like shepherds tend the flock of God among you, watch over it. Don't shepherd because you must, but do it voluntarily for God. Don't shepherd greedily, but do it eagerly. Don't shepherd by ruling over those entrusted to your care, but become examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you'll receive an unfading crown of glory. It's the reminder to all of us elders, and this is the thing that I try to keep in mind, I, I try to lift up. You know, in my leadership, I always try to lift up the people that are around me, the people who are doing the work. I always try to make sure I don't get the credit for the community work that is done, that I, I do work and I try to uh, model lifting up others who do it. I don't always succeed, um, and I come to this, as Peter's going to say, in humility, knowing that I can't succeed knowing that sometimes um, there will be failings, but I always keep this in mind. And, and First Peter's author, I think, has is onto something here of saying that when we're in authority, one of the first important things is to keep in mind what we are stewards of. We're stewards of creation. We're also stewards of community. That without a community to follow, there are no leaders. And so sort of this idea that we can rule over one another as an authoritarian aim and have a community still, it's, it's not right. And it's a thing we need to remember in the world um, out around us as authoritarian regimes around the country, around the world, um, continue to gain power in um, Russia and Hungary and Poland, um, you know, among other places, the, these places that have had democracy and, and shift. It's a reminder to us all, you know, to listen and serve one another uh, with humility, not for our own glory. In the same way, I urge you who are younger, accept the authority of the elders, and everyone clothe yourselves with humility toward each other. God stands against the proud, but he gives favor to the humble. You know, it's hard. It, it's hard for us all to have, you know, we have pride in the things we do, and we want to talk about it. And it, it's good to appreciate our accomplishments, um, but we all must be humble and, you know, it's funny because you hear in this the echoes of today, oh, millennials, um, even though most of the, the younger people today are not even millennials. You hear that thing that, you know, that passion of the young to make change, that passion to identify all the flaws in the system before us. We can't ignore that voice. I think that's why there's a charge of the elders first to say, hey, look, we're not just there to put the youngsters in their places. But we have to listen to them. Um, at the same time, you know, it's a reminder that, yeah, the world is more complicated than it sometimes seems when we're 16 or 17 or 18 or 19 or 22. It is a complicated world out there, and sometimes the elders you know, have some perspective as well. And so it's a reminder for us to temper, uh, to temper that, um, especially to the younger folks. And I don't know about you, but I at least uh, recognize myself in that urging. Therefore, humble yourselves under God's power so that he may rise you, raise you up in the last day. Throw all your anxiety unto him because he cares about you. Be clear-headed, keep alert. Your accuser, the devil, is on the prowl like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith. Do so in the knowledge that your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. After you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, the one who called you into his eternal glory in Christ Jesus, will himself restore and power, strengthen, and establish you. Sin be power forever and always. Amen. And this is not the actual ending of... Um, the book, there's one more uh, small set of clothing we'll should go over tomorrow. But again, this thing, be, be clear-headed, keep alert. It's so easy out of our pride and out of our anger and out of our rage to see a false clarity. To be clear on what we need to do, but have it not be the right thing we need to do. And here, First Peter is saying, remember that humility, remember our service to God. Remember 
that we are called first to listen and then to speak and to look around and say, where are the places that others are being oppressed and made to suffer the way that we think we are? And, you know, again, he, he's saying here, do so in the knowledge of your fellow believers are enduring the same suffering throughout the world. It's also a call to everyone else to say, hey, look, let's be in solidarity with the people who are suffering. And let's look and see where the power is causing them to suffer. And, and what can we do in all of that? And when we act in that way out of humility and not out of our own self-congratulation, then we can be assured that, you know, at whatever the judgment is, whatever it is that God is calling us to do, we, we will have done what we are called to do. This is Pastor Nathan Willard on Wednesday, June 10th. Godspeed, and tomorrow we conclude with First Peter.